What's going on, everybody? I am Perry White. I'm the host of the Jaguar Journal. I want to make sure that you guys tune in live each and every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 107.3 FM. We also have our affiliates in Alexandria, Louisiana, as well as down in New Orleans. And if you're not able to catch us on Radio Live, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Facebook. It's the Jaguar Journal. Spoken, informative, the Jaguar Journal. Your source for the latest information on Southern University sports and SWAC athletics. A Baton Rouge sports talk tradition. All right, it is the Jaguar Journal. Good morning, everybody. Dealing with some things this morning, but we finally got it together. I hope everybody's having a great week and an even better weekend. It is St. Patrick's Day, and you know here in Baton Rouge, the wearing of the Green Parade is a big deal. Uh, Boosie Bash as well here in the city of Baton Rouge this weekend. So there's a lot going on in terms of entertainment this morning. And y'all wouldn't believe me if I told you, so I'm not going to tell you about this type of morning I've had so far. But we getting it together. My man Mike got everything rocking and rolling. We got the live stream going. Good morning to everybody who's watching us via YouTube and as well as our Facebook Live. Good morning to everybody out there listening on radio. Mike, let's make sure this behind us. They're going to get us on that one. (laughs) They like to try to flag us when we don't do the right thing, so we're going to keep them from flagging us. Make sure if you got some green on today, I don't want nobody to pinch you because, Mike, where your green at? Mike don't have – you have to put a dollar on you or something, Mike. Oh, you got to – okay. Uh, it's on his socks. He had to find <laughs> – he had to find it. I just got this on right here. So this is close as I got with the green uh, today. But good morning to everybody. Uh, we had to switch the lives a couple times, but now we finally got everything up. We are rocking and rolling. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Good show today. We're going to talk about some March Madness. I know, and I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to call in if you want to talk about the Southern University men and women basketball team, 225-499-1073. Get you about 830 once you guys start to call in at 730. We're going to get my guy Ken Rashad of HBCU Sports. He's going to come on and talk to us about Uh, Some changes to the basketball format for next year's uh, basketball season, conference season for uh, the SWAC. And that's going to be interesting. Then as well as my guy, Santoria Black, is going to come on at 8 o'clock. Of course, he's if you've been watching the SWAC basketball tournament over in Birmingham, he's been the guy that's been calling every game so far uh, throughout the tournament. So we're going to have him on, do a recap, talk about some of the games, or as many games as we can both on the men and the women's side. Talk about some upsets. Look at Alcorn State. They're playing in the women's championship today. They upset 
Southern University and as well as Grambling State, both the higher seeds, Alcorn State playing in the championship game today against Jackson State on the women's side and on the men. It's Texas Southern looking for their fourth straight SWAC basketball tournament champion. Ship taking on Grambling State, a rematch of last year's big game. Should be interesting. And, and, and most of all, what I'm interested in is, is hearing from you guys, Southern and men and women teams, both fall short in the quarterfinal, the opening round of the SWAG basketball tournament. Uh, tough season when you look at uh, the excitement. Southern women were the defending champions from last year. You look at Southern men, were right there battling for first place the entire season with Grambling going back and forth, but then taking on Bethune-Cookman in that quarterfinal. And for three consecutive losses against Bethune-Cookman this year. Coach Reggie Theus and the Wildcats seem to really just have our number, and it made it tough on us. So, yeah, it's March Madness. And if you've been paying attention to any of the other basketball games, things have been going on around the tournament. Talk, talk about the ACC. You look at North Carolina State knocking off Duke. Then last night with a last-second three-pointer to win a game, they'll be playing against North Carolina in the ACC championship. And so there's a lot going on. We're going to talk all day. Today is going to be basketball, all right? No football today, unless y'all call and ask me a question. But it's all basketball, and I am opening the show up to you guys. If you want to call in, talk about what you thought about the basketball season, both for Southern men and women, uh, the way that it ended, anything that you would like to see progress or grow, uh, you know, that's the best thing I could do for you today. Allow me to give you the outlet to speak your mind in terms of how you feel. Because I know some people do feel some type of way. I saw it via social media, especially on the women's side with Coach Funches. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at Coach Kevin Johnson in year one uh, of his coaching career here at Southern University, I would say pretty good year one. For the men, I'm looking to see perhaps some depth now starting to build with this team. Uh, and that's what they're really going to need, some depth. You know, moving forward, what is the status of Terry on Joseph? Uh, the Baton Rouge native, Scotlandville graduate on the team. He was not on the team for the second half of the conference schedule in which they needed him. You look at that game against Bethune-Cookman, man. And for me... The game against Bethune-Cookman for the men, and when you look at the women on the other side against Alcorn State. And at, and at this point, when you look at Alcorn, it just, it's a Cinderella story on the women's side. Knocking off Southern, then knocking off Grambling. Hey, and I saw the funniest thing. If you guys have been watching the SWAC basketball tournament on ESPN+, Plus, I saw somebody, social media can be a funny place. If you've seen Alcorn State's women's basketball coach, the funniest stat, uh, status I saw was somebody said, how did Southern lose to Pete Richardson? <laughs> and I had to double look, and that coach really, he looks like Pete Richardson. That one got me. <laughs> Alcorn State women's basketball coach, does kind of look like Pete Richardson. He resembles him. So we're going to get ready to take a break. My guy, Ken Richard, going to come on for HBCU Sports. We're going to talk about the new format that the SWAC is going to roll out next year for men and women basketball. It's going to be different. If you have not heard, it's going to be different. So Ken and I are going to discuss that. We're going to talk about some pros and cons and how this thing is going to look with the way that they're going to format it. So you guys bear with us and stick with me, all right? Follow us on our Facebook Live. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you guys for listening out there on 107.3. We'll be back more to Jaguar Journal. Danny Johnson, uh, first and foremost, outstanding young man, great character, um, great young man. I uh, can't say enough about him. Uh, great father. You always see him, you know, hanging around with his son and spending time with his son and his family. Um, as a player, uh, I can't say enough about him. He has all the athletic ability that you would want in a, in a kid with playing corner, uh, the footwork, speed, um, all the intangibles. You know, I have a good work ethic. You know, it's been a lot of times, you know, in the off season, I got to just push myself to go work out, you know, even if nobody else was out there, just to, you know, get an extra push when we get back into the season, you know, because I, I always wanted to have the edge over everybody else. So, you know, it's just that mindset that I have, you know, I want to I be one of the best. So, you know, I got to push myself, you know, if anybody else does. 
and it's like a lot of stuff that I want to do with my son that I can't do because I'm, I'm playing ball. So my biggest return to him is just, you know, having him come to games on Saturday, and, you know, he can see his father play in front of, you know, thousands of people. You know, it's just, it makes him happy. So whenever he's happy, I'm happy. But just when I get the chance to just go home and, you know, hear everything, you know, he's been doing in school and, you know, what he, what he likes and doesn't like, you know, it just brings me back to that, just that fatherhood of just being around him. And that's what I like to do. You know, I put academics over football because, you know, I can't play football forever. You know, at some point, you know, I'm going to have to rely on that degree. So, you know, that's my biggest thing. And that's one reason why I came to Southern to get that degree. So I set myself up to where I'll be able to graduate right after the season. So if football doesn't work out for me, I can always come back and go to grad school. So, you know, education is a big thing for me. Danny Johnson put Southern University on a, you know, national stage. Obviously, everybody knows about the Nation and Southern University. But uh, you'll see Danny Johnson playing on Sunday one day. And he'll be able to be an, amb an ambassador, you know, for the university. What's going on, everybody? I am Perry White. I'm the host of the Jaguar Journal. I want to make sure that you guys tune in live each and every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 107.3 FM. We also have our affiliates in Alexandria, Louisiana, as well as down in New Orleans. And if you're not able to catch us on Radio Live, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Facebook. It's the Jaguar Journal. What's going on, everybody? I am Perry White. I'm the host of the Jaguar Journal. I want to make sure that you guys tune in live each and every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 107.3 FM. We also have our affiliates. All right, we are back. It is the Jaguar Journal. Good morning. I'm finally and got myself together. I ain't so discombobulated right now. All right, let's get it going. As we continue the show, got a very special guest this morning. My guy, he is the man that runs everything over there at HBCU Sports. Let's welcome to the show this morning, Ken Richard. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, brother. How are you? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. The last thing we need, though, is for you to be discombobulated. So, yeah. you know. It was a little rough, you know, this morning, rushing, trying to get things together. And I tell people, I tell people don't realize, I got caught up by a train on my way to the studio. And you know the train, the slowest one where it kind of stops, then sl slowly peak, picks back up then stops again. So I kind of was getting a little frustrated. It had me a little discombobulated. But now that I'm right here at the mic, got the show going, I'm back where I need to be, Ken. Good, man. Good. That's good news. How you doing on your end? Man, you know what? Uh, I, I would just simply say this. Be because because you, my boy, and we like that, but I will echo the words of one Ice Cube when he said in the movie, Boys in the Hood, I ain't been up this early in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you, man. I know, and that's one of the things too here with the Jaguar Journal Seven to Nine. 
I, and I appreciate everybody that's watching via our YouTube channel, uh, watching our YouTube live, and as well as our Facebook live. Good morning to you guys. Make sure you follow and subscribe. Uh, but that's one of the things about this show because it is early on a Saturday morning. Sometimes it makes it harder to be able to get the type of guests that we look for to be able to have the conversation because a lot of people just don't feel like talking, especially to loudmouth Perry White on a Saturday morning. <laughs> no, it's, it, 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 and for the record, it, it's not that I don't get up early. It's just that, you know, I'm here covering a tournament. And when you've had a long day like I had yesterday and didn't get to bed until about 2 in the morning, then, you know, <laughs> because work and stuff, uh, you know. I definitely but understand. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, but I'm good. Well, I appreciate you for joining me this morning. Ken, earlier this week on, you did a, a show and also, Ken, if you want to follow Ken, tell everybody where they can follow you just before we even get started. HBCUsports.com. That's the website. We cover anything and everything HBCU athletics, HBCU sports. So earlier this week on HBCU Sports, you guys did a show, and you basically talked about and broke down that this new SWAC scheduling for next year's conference basketball season kind of just start us off from what you heard and what you ended up thinking about it and then how you formulated everything. Yeah, so as of now, and it's not official yet, this is still something that's pending, but from what my, from my understanding, it's just something that's just, a, you know, a matter of formality. Uh, but the, the SWAC plans on modifying its regular season schedule to where, uh, where previously the SWAC conference basketball games were on uh, Saturdays, and two, uh, two, Saturdays and Tuesdays, which were, you know, doubleheaders, on uh, men's and women's played on Saturday, men and, and both played on Tuesday. Starting uh, next season, the women will have their own uh, schedule as well as the men. So it will be a Thursday, Saturday, uh, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday format in which the women will be playing by themselves on Thursday nights. There will be a double header on on uh, in which the men and women play on Saturday nights, and then on Tuesday the men will be playing by themselves. You sure it's Tuesday, Tuesday or Monday? It's Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, Tuesday. Because the, the 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 I'm trying now. You got me. Yeah, the the the, the format schedule uh, typically was Saturday and Tuesday, I believe. Saturday and Monday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, there you go. Saturday and Monday. It's early. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. 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 Saturday and Monday. Uh, but my understanding as of now is that the women will play on Thursday. The uh, doubleheaders will be on Saturday, and the men will play on Tuesday. Oh, excuse me, on Monday. On Monday. There oh, we go. You, what's, what about this Tuesday going on? What you do on Tuesday? I, I, tu man, don't, I don't know. But no. <laughs> so let, 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 me, let me correct that again. Thursday, Saturday, and Monday. Okay. Thursday, Saturday, Monday. All right, let's go back through this now. Let's look at the current format. Doubleheaders on Saturdays, doubleheaders on Mondays. I know... On Saturdays, you can get games started at noon with the women's game and get guy, get the men's game at about 3, and then you can roll on with the day. Now, on the Mondays, because you have those doubleheaders, it can turn into a little bit later in the evening on Monday trying to roll doubleheaders. For you, when you look at this, let's talk about some pros and cons to this, maybe travel expense, maybe just the overall thought of this, Ken. Yeah, so that is the, as of now, that is the question that pretty much has everyone in flux. Now, I'm pretty, I'm guessing that the the, the higher-ups probably have this all figured out, um, and I, I'll admit I don't necessarily know all of the details, um, but, you know, I, there's a part of me that thinks that uh, with, with women's basketball being what it is right now, and the, I, I guess you could say a, a resurgence of, of, a, of, the, the the amount of tension that we have right now with women's basketball, um, it looks like uh, the SWAC has decided to go ahead and and feature the women uh, to give them their own nights. I don't know if this is an issue of Title IX or, or, or whatever the case may be, but this is a, a case to where while there may very well be a, an additional expense, and this is just an assumption and 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 based and, and just a lot of speculation. But there's a, the, the assumption and, and some speculation that there may be a pending television deal or streaming deal that will go along with that to help override some of those additional costs that we might see some of these teams have to incur, incur with 
you know, with, with uh, men and women traveling on individual nights. They already travel separately, but because now they're traveling on additional days, you know, there, there's reason to believe that there could very well be a pending TV deal in, in play. And this pending TV deal, are we talking possibly, and it just we, we can have the conversation, uh, still with HBCU Go TV or with ESPN? That That is the that is the million-dollar question. It, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and again, that, that's why I say it's speculation at, that, at this point. Um, part of me thinks that this could possibly be HBCU Go. I don't know. Then again, for all we know, there, there, there may not be a TV deal, and this just very well may be something that, you know, the, the coaches and the presidents all decided that maybe we just need to give the women and men their own separate night. So, like I said, I, I don't want to go too far with the speculation, yeah. but uh, I, I, I did confirm that the format will be changing as of next season. So we look- that, much is, that, that much we know for sure. We look at this format, and, and I guess I want to keep going at it in, in different directions. All right. So Southern and Grambling are traveling par- partners, right? Let's right. say Southern and Grambling then has to play uh, Mississippi Valley and UAPB. And let's you let's take this weekend, give the people and break it down. How would that work with Southern Grambling traveling partners? Now you're talking about girls game on one day by itself, uh, double header Saturday, and then a guys uh, playing on a Monday. How, how is this going to look? Right. So so the way I understand it is. The so let, let's just I, I, I use this example on the show. Let's just say Grambling and Southern uh, play each other on a on the doubleheader night, both teams. Or we, you know, so let, let's say that. Uh, but on on a on a Thursday night, the men, the Southern men, might play say Jackson State on a Thursday night, and then. Grambling the Southern might play each other on a double header, and then on Monday, Southern may the, the Southern men may end up playing Jackson State. If that, if you follow me on that, you got to tell that to me again. Uh, okay. Okay. So, 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 like, like, okay. So let's just say you've got Grambling and uh, I'm, I, and again I, I use just say Southern and Grambling. Let's say that Southern and Grambling are oh, excuse me, Southern Southern and Jackson are playing a, on a doubleheader on, on on a Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So and I don't necessarily know. I'm not I'm not doing this with the travel partners. I'm just simply saying let's just say okay. Southern and Grambling, Alcorn and and uh, and Valley. Okay. And this okay. Is, this is just a scenario. Okay. So let's just say that. Southern, Southern uh, women will be playing against Alcorn on Thursday. So, 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 Southern women on Thursday, right? Southern versus Alcorn on Thursday. And then let's just say the doubleheader, when both men and women play, Southern would say would be both playing Jack uh, Grambling on the same night. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, Southern has all Southern women has already played all corn on Thursday. Southern will play Jackson State. Uh, Southern will, Southern men and women would play Grambling on Saturday, and then Southern men would play all corn that following Tuesday, uh, that that following Monday. So, in other words, whoever Southern women play on Thursday, the men will play that same team on Monday. And they will have the same opponent on that double header that Saturday night. Okay. So you're just going to have two teams traveling two different places, one traveling on a Thursday and come back, and then one traveling on Monday and then coming back. That is correct. Okay. That, that That's the simplest way to put it. But what I'm saying is, is that I'm, I'm saying with respect to opponent. Yeah. So the double header games will, will still be against the same opponent, the same school, both, both men and women on Saturday. But whoever the women will play on that Thursday, the men will play that same team on Monday. Okay. And I guess I was curious when I looked at the travel partners because I know if you look around the conference, for those that don't know, Texas Southern and Prairie View are travel partners. Southern right. and Grambling are travel partners. Right. Uh, Jackson State and All Corner travel partners. UAPB and Mississippi Valley are travel partners. A&M and Alabama State are travel partners. And then you have Bethune-Cookman 
and Florida A and M that are travel right. partners. Uh, right. One weekend out of the season doing conference, one of those two travel partners play each other. But when they play each other, it's typically a Saturday doubleheader, and they're off on that Monday. So in this case, with those travel partners, they're probably not going to be off. Or they probably will they still be off if they play each other and then they don't have that extra game? They'll still be off on Thursday as well as Monday. They'll just have that weekend game and then once they travel again, then that it'll split. That's right. Okay. That's right. There you go. There you go. See? Let me ask you this. What what do you think is is there a true reason? I know you said the possibility of a TV deal, uh, with women's basketball moving up, but I just, for me, I, I think the format was pretty cool where it was at. Well, you know what? And I was the same way. And, and believe me, when I, <laughs> when I tell you, I've been here. I've been here. And, you know, I, I, I actually had some conversations with a couple of administrators. And for whatever reason, man, I don't know. I, I said, look, I'm not going to say anything. But for whatever <laughs> reason, they would not cross that bridge with me. So it, it, it wasn't for the lack of trying. I am here. And I am determined to get some clarity on it. The only thing that I've confirmed <laughs> is that that schedule will change. But as far as the reasoning or the rationale behind it, I've not I've not gotten a, a clear cut response uh, that I would feel comfortable telling you and, and and your audience. Do you think the swag will roll this out? Because I think one of the things when you look at the swag, sometimes when it comes to information being put out there. It's kind of like sprinkled out there just a little bit instead of just like, hey, let's roll it out. And then you then you get to truly hear from a SWAC official, let's say the commissioner or someone from the SWAC office to really break this down instead of just putting it in a press release. Yeah, well, I, look, I think that once it becomes official, um, knowing Dr. McClellan like I know him, he's going to be probably more than uh, – welcoming of, you know, interviews to, to break this down, to provide the rationale and the reasoning for the move and the change. And we'll probably provide some additional details that we may not even be aware of. I'm pretty certain of that, just based upon how he's operated in the past. Yeah, this is interesting. And when I, when I heard you talking about it, and you initially was talking about it from <clears throat> the Carlos Brown show, uh, with him, Charles Edmond, and some other guys were having conversation. And, uh, kind of put it out there, then I saw your take on it and how, you know, you were kind of looking at it throughout the discussion that you guys were having. I kind of sat back and I was and I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, I, I can see the good of it. I'm just curious enough, will SWAC basketball fans, if this does turn out to be true, will show up to support women's basketball all on its own? That's what I'm really curious to see. I think that the, that will only be as good as the school, and I'm talking about the member institutions, it, it will only be as good as they allow it to be. There's going to have to be some efforts made by each individual school to make sure that those women's games get just as much of attention or, 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 or from the standpoint of attention, uh, attendance. They're going to have to do whatever it is necessary to make sure it happens. Now, there's a part of me that thinks that just by default, one of the reasons why, you know, when you have those double those double header games, you, you you have the early games, they play, and you know the the, the crowds a little you know a little, little thin, and they they begin to trickle in as we progress towards the men's game. But I'm thinking because of the early start times that we have with those double header games, now that the women's games will likely start, I'm thinking you know somewhere in the ballpark six thirty seven, even seven thirty, being the long game of that evening. On, depending on the particular campus, I'm thinking that could be an ideal opportunity for individuals, students and even individuals who may be working during the, the week with an opportunity to get to those games in time with the additional help of marketing from those individual schools, the women could very well benefit from an attendance standpoint. And then you would think with, with, with ticket purchases and so forth, the school would benefit monetarily to where those games can be just as well attended as the men's games are likely to, to be. I'll be honest, and this is me personally, this is my opinion. I don't think SWAC women's basketball is that attractive to stand out on its own. I think SWAC women's basketball has benefited by being on a doubleheader ticket with SWAC men's basketball. Uh, and I think when you look at the way that, I would say personally, the lack of branding and the marketing now that we see towards our actual basketball games, 
I don't see it increasing just because the girls have a game on their own. Now, I get the, the idea that women's basketball is getting uh, more spotlight shined on it. But me personally, I don't think the brand of SWAC women's basketball on its own can survive when you're talking about trying to turn it into possible revenue of saying, well, we wanted to stand on its own because we can obviously get people in the stands to come watch the game. I don't think because whether it's an early game or a later game, I don't think that's going to matter. I think it comes down to the brand of basketball, not just because we're playing basketball. It's the brand of basketball. And right now, the brand of basketball in this conference seems to be Jackson State. And when you put women's basketball on its own, I think where we are, it need men and women basketball need e each other currently. I don't think we have the product where it can stand on its own currently. I, I, well, you know what? Now, look, I, 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 I understand the sentiment, and I'm inclined to agree with you. I just think that this is something that this is one of those things that because of how we've been used to, to, to seeing these games play out over, you know, I, I guess you can say decades, mm -hmm. going back as far to when I was in school, and that was back in the Stone Ages. Uh, you know, I, I think it is going to require some getting used to. You know, of course, we've had those games periodically during the non-conference season where you would see games in which, you know, the women would play by themselves and you didn't really see a whole lot of people in the stands. But I think that this is just one of those things where it may not necessarily be magic overnight, but it is something that I think can progress with time. But I think it's going to require, again, it's, it's going to require the, the, the help of the conference. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of this is going to rely upon the support of the individual schools. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, 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 it, granted, women's basketball is, 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 is popular. And, and, and I agree with you that the SWAC brand of women's basketball may not necessarily be as popular as we might see uh, in, in, in other conferences, but there are some names worth spotlighting here. And I think that, it, it, again, it's going to require some effort. I, I just put it like that. I agree with you. It's definitely going to require some efforts. Now, you're looking at an extra night for the band. You're looking at an extra night for the cheerleaders uh, to, to try to make this thing a success. I'm just looking forward to this good conversation in this conversation because you got to think when they're at the table having these conversations about what the future is going to look like, you would hope that all of this is also circulating around the table. Uh, and it's called constructive criticism. It's just having conversation, putting ideas on the table and being able to discuss because there are going to be questions and questions are going to be risen all around the place in terms of people asking what do you think about this? What are the pros? What are the cons? So I'm glad we were able to be able to have that conversation right here. Ken, thank you for coming on this morning, man. I appreciate you for being able to do this with me. And trust me, it won't be the last time. But before I get ready to let you go, tell everybody how they can follow you and keep up with you, man. Hey, you can follow me on HBCUsports.com. And if you want to follow me individually, you can just go to all of the social media, uh, media networks at Ken Rashad. And that's with two ends, K-E-N-N Rashad. And, uh, Keep in touch. Ken, how long you been doing this, man? I, I I remember way, way, way back in the day, man. How long you been in the game? Uh, let's just say that the HBCU sports started, began as a swag page in 1997. <laughs> and what was it? What were you doing with this this space before then? Well, well, be, well the, the page primarily grew in popularity because of its message board, which was kind of, I, I view it as social media one-on-one -on -one with the forums. And, it, you know, from there, and, and we pretty much dealt with press releases. But as we grew and evolved, uh, we've grown to the point to where now we have, uh, you know, uh, professionally trained journalists, a small staff of individuals who are cranking out news stories. And we're just, uh, you know, trying to evolve and stay with the time. And I know those message boards you're talking about, because sometimes I have to dig deep when I'm looking for information. Those message boards from the early 2000s where people were conversating. It was rough in the swack and all of that before we had the Facebook groups and stuff. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and, and because of the various tiers that we've had, believe it or not, a lot of actual, you know, when, when, when print uh, journalists were still, you know, the beat writers and so forth, people wouldn't believe it or not, but a lot of these beat writers would literally get their leads and their sources of information from our message board. So that just kind of gives you some idea as to how impactful uh, we've been, not only on the conference, but we think on the entire HBCU landscape.
And that's why I wanted to have that conversation. Also take that walk down memory lane because you and your platform have been around a long time. You're talking about back since the 90s. There are a lot of people say, you know, you get a lot of people that hit this space when Deion Sanders hit it. But you was around years and years before. So, man, it was good. It's good to be able to have that conversation. Then gives the people uh, some history about how long you've been doing it and how important it is why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, well, uh, I, look, I, 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 I literally, now I'll make this real quick. I was literally at a table earlier of a couple of days ago with a number of colleagues. We were kind of having a little quick uh, uh, snack between games. And for whatever reason, the, 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 the question of age uh, came up, and all of a sudden people started naming their ages only to realize I was literally the oldest person at the table. I said, okay, that's it. We got to go. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to accept that. You just got to accept that. You unk now. What's up, unk? <laughs> hey, kid, thank you for coming on this morning, man. Enjoy yourself over there in Birmingham and uh, watching uh, the championship. You're a Grambling man, right? I am. So I, I know am. you're happy that you're playing Texas Southern today, or you're not happy you're playing well, Texas well, Southern. Well, look, it is Texas Southern, and we know how Texas Southern rolls during the, during the swag tournament, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be professional about it, but, you know, deep down inside, man, that, 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 that grand fam is still in me. <laughs> well, good luck to you guys today, Ken, and thank you for coming on. I appreciate you, Perry. Thank you, brother. All right. That was Ken Rashad, HBCU Sports. Mike, we got enough time to take a break and then come back before the top of the hour. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. Stay tuned more to Jaguar Journal. It's on the yard sports, and I'm Perry White. And what I need for you to do is go follow and subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter right now. DR Ricks is a fifth-year senior who's getting his first chance to drive the train that Bob talked about. And right now, he's driving it quite well because the Southern Jaguars are kicking butt in the SWAC conference. As Bob mentioned, 6-0 overall in the SWAC, and TR Ricks has played so well. Over 2,000 yards passing. In the last three games running the football, he's been over 100 yards on the ground. The respect factor that he gets from his teammates is incredible as a fifth year senior has never started they elected him captain and the numbers he has put up are represented on your screen 27 total touchdowns on the offense a pass percentage of nearly 60 percent he could be the swack player of the year on the offensive side best and they're going to get a huge dose of the best offensive player in the swack and that being thomas ricks yeah what thomas ricks has found a way to do is just beat defenses either with his arm with his feet or with his leadership capabilities finding a way to win the games late with four quarter comebacks. He showed versatility and athleticism. He's a tremendous athlete that knows how to win most importantly. He really is a leader both on and off the field. I just think it has come to a maturity level. Um, you know, uh, I have a four-year-old son and, you know, when he was born I had to grow up uh, fast and, you know, just staying in school and, and, and practicing every day, trying to get better every day. You know, just so he can have a better future. Uh, it's, it's just been my inspiration. So, you know, I just think that's that's my motor that drives me and you know keeps me in the game. His four-year-old son Collier has not missed a game this season. They throw the football around in Rick's dorm room at Southern, and he says it's great playing football with Collier. First and ten, Rick's has got Vernon. Vernon makes the catch at the 45. They can run the entire offense with all those guys in the game. Ricks to Vernon. First down. Holmes in the backfield. Ricks. First down. Gag on the tackle, but not until Ricks picks up the first down. Second and seven. Ricks. Overstreet's got it. Across midfield. Ricks. Has a receiver downfield. It's caught for a touchdown! Territory. Ricks fakes the pitch. Gets inside the 15. He's in the type of young men that, that represent his philosophy in life and in football. Ricks in a shotgun. He's going to run it out to the 10. And second and 11 after the holding penalty. Sidearm toss. And a nice catch. Ricks on the first and 10. Little draw play. Takes it outside. He's got the first down. But Ricks got to take him. Talk 107.3 FM. I am Perry White. Good morning. This is the Jaguar Journal. Good morning to everybody watching us on our YouTube live, watching us on our Facebook live, and as well as listening on 107.3 FM. I know there are a lot of people out up and early this morning, tuned in on the radio waves, getting ready for the wearing of the green parade 
here in Baton Rouge this morning. Hope you guys enjoy yourself, right? I got a little green on. Mike has a little green on. I'm sure everybody out there is rocking their green this morning. And I hope you guys are having a good morning. Hope you had an even better week as we get ready to prepare and enjoy ourselves today and then get back to work on Monday and keep things going. Thank you to Ken Richard for coming on from HBCU Sports talking about the new, the new swag format. They're going to lay it out for us, but we having that pre, you know, conversation about it, the pros and cons. M myself personally, I I'm not a fan of it. I mean, you're asking fans to now dedicate three days of week to basketball, in which I don't think SWAC basketball is the brand that people think it is currently because clearly look at the attendance at the SWAC basketball tournament right now. That's my personal opinion. So when you break this thing up now on a Thursday, Saturday, and Monday, I personally don't think the attention is there. I personally don't think the schools co collectively in the conference do enough to promote what's already in place. I personally don't think the conference does enough to promote its own swag basketball tournament taking place right now over the past three days, uh, over in three and four days over in Birmingham, Alabama. When you're going to add an extra day in the fold of things, you have to be, be prepared as an institution, as an athletic department to be able to market that because you can market men and women basketball together, right? And just say double header is going to be a day of basketball. Now that means you're going to have to ramp up the effort to be able to market women's basketball by itself on a Thursday. And I think women's basketball has been, uh, to me personally, when I look back at it this past season and before, I thought women's basketball has truly benefited by being in a double header with men's basketball on this level. I know it's not like that in, in other conferences. Other conferences do things different. But when you talk about the swag and the brand of basketball that we have here, myself personally thought women's basketball benefited a lot by being on the same ticket with men's basketball. Now, if the brand changes, if the marketing changes, then yes, of course. But right now, I just don't think the brand and the marketing is there to be able to do it to where you can see success where there are going to be just as many people or at least half as many as people at the women's basketball that you will get at the men's basketball game for the SWAT, for those that are listening. Mike, let's get ready to take a break. We're at the top of the hour. When we come back, we're going to have my man Santoria Black. He's been calling the games over in Birmingham for the SWAT basketball tournament. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be back more to the Jaguar Journal. Southern was a little late to the game of football. They had started earlier in the CIAA up at Hampton and those schools up there. And uh, when Dr. Clark became, J.S. Clark became president of Southern University in 1914, he had already visited Tuskegee and these Howard and the other school and they had a football program. And he wanted to compete with them, not just in the classroom, but also on the football field. So it started as an intramural. We had intramurals when we first came in 1914 through 1916, 17. And then the intramural program evolved into the varsity, into the football program with no, in 1918. Coach Big Charlie Holmes from Colorado State, he came here as an assistant coach, but he took over around 1922, 1923. And he did very well uh, through the early 20s. When he came up to 26, uh, uh, he, did, he broke even, he was expected to do well, and 27, uh, I, I don't find any records where he won any games there, and he was replaced. But the person he was replaced by was a legendary uh, name is uh, Bryce Union Taylor from the University of Southern California. Out there, he had uh, been an All-American. He was a guy that stopped the four horsemen of Notre Dame and, he, and uh, then he went to Chaplin University in South Carolina in 27. In 1928, he became the head football coach at Southern University and athletic director. And he really put Southern on the map. He had a lot of firsts. Uh, first of all, he had, the first All-Americans we had came under him. Uh, that, therefore, he had uh, the greatest winning percentage in Southern University. He won 85% of his game here. And he had our first undefeated season in 1931 when he was 7 and 0. Uh, but well, he was not declared national champ, but he was considered for that. But he was our first great coach during that early period, Bryce Union Taylor. We don't want to forget him. Uh, Honor W. Mumford, he's a national uh, uh, icon in, the, in, in coaching. He had coached 10 years in Texas, uh, Jarvis Christians, Bishop, and Texas College. 
But the last uh, five or six years at Texas College, he was very, very outstanding. He had won, he won two swag titles, and he had won a national black championship at Texas College and, and 35. So therefore, uh, Southern was interested in getting him here, and Dr. Uh, Felton Clark was very instrumental in the person to get him here. But his impact is, is, it goes much further than Southern University and State of Louisiana. He won uh, 12 swag titles, uh, 10 of them at Southern and two at Texas College and he won five or six national black championships. And also, he was very successful in the first interracial bowl game, the, uh, the Fruit Bowl in San Francisco in 1948 when he played San Francisco State, and uh, he won that game decisively. But his influence uh, uh, extended much further than the boundaries of Southern University. He was recognized nationally as a, as, a, as a great coach. His winning record, well, he didn't coach over a period of 35 years, but in a couple of those years, they didn't have teams because of the war, but he won 246 games, second only to Eddie Robinson with his uh, 402 game over 55 years, I should add. And so they always had large supporters, and they would follow the team everywhere. They would go in large numbers. So Southern became the team that everyone loves to beat, loves every Saturday. It's the toughest game we have every, every Saturday. So if they don't win another game, they figure if they win the Southern game, they had a good season. <laughs> and because we carry a large crowd with us everywhere we go too, so a lot of people like that. And we like to brag about how good we are. And, and, and of course, that hips up. But it, it is a vista to the university uh, using the football athletics period to use that way to introduce the university to people who may not have known the university. Went through a, a period of uh, 20 years, 30 years, 30 years, I believe it was, uh, after mom, until we got Coach Peach Richardson in 1982-83, and then he returned us to the glory years. All right, good morning to everybody. It is the Jaguar Journal. We're at the top of the hour. Good morning to all our YouTube listeners and watchers and subscribers. Go hit that subscribe button right now, please. I don't want your social security number. I don't want your birth certificate. I don't even need to know your credit card number. I just need your love and support. Hit that subscribe button as well as on our Facebook channel. Go hit the follow on Facebook for the Jaguar Journal. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, let's keep things going this morning. I'm Perry White. Thank you, everybody. Listen on Radio 107.3. I know it's active out in the Baton Rouge area this morning. People are getting ready for the wearing of the Green Parade, so I know we probably may have more than normal listeners listening this morning, so it's good to have you. If this is your first time, we hope it ain't your last time. And just as we're going to keep things going, this is my guy right here, Sports Broadcast. If you've been listening to any of the swag basketball game, men or women, he's been rocking and rolling. All week long, nonstop, Santoria Black, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Oh, I sound like Barry White's little brother right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm all right. <laughs> what have you been doing to keep that voice, man? I mean, you've been rocking and rolling since Wednesday. Um, you know, drink, drink something hot. Try not to drink as much, you know, as many harsh things. Um, you know, just. You know, I get done, you know, not a lot of talking after I get done at night. You know, just uh, trying to do a few things here and there just to make sure that it's okay. Well, I try to limit your voice use today, and I try to do as much and just kind of carry you right into it. Swag women's basketball, let's start on that side. The tournament started on Wednesday. Let's look at some games played. And then I just ask you, Centro, you just give me some background of how these things and what you've seen as you've broadcasted these games on the women's side. Grambling took on Florida a and in a tough game in which Florida a and in the last about two, three minutes of that game, I thought had clear opportunities to be able to win that game. They could knock down free throws, nor did they get good looks at the basket, as well as turning the ball over late into that ball game. Grambling held on, winning 66-60. to Then Jackson State, the number one team, number one seed, regular season champ, took on Prairie View with Sandy Pugh. Coach Tamika Reed and her team rolled on 67-58, to opening with the quarterfinal. Then the next day, the Cinderella, so far, who will be playing in the championship today, the Braves of Alcorn State and Centauri. Something funny I saw on social media. They said Alcorn State women's basketball coach looked like Pete Richardson. I wouldn't want to put that in your head now if you see him today at the game. But they took on Southern <laughs> Alcorn State, upset Southern women's basketball, 
59 to 52 in the quarterfinal. And then Pine Bluff getting the victory over Alabama AM, uh, 82 to 74. That quarterfinal, man, what'd you think about it? Well, look, it, the, the quarterfinals I thought were really, really telling. Um, I, I guess to me, one of the uh, quarterfinals that I thought was really interesting was just the All Corn Seven game. Uh, Destiny Brown, I thought, was just uh, really telling. She just was huge. She was just a free throw making machine, not just in the quarterfinals, but in the semifinals as well. And I, I thought that she really just uh, gave both Southern and Grambling fit uh, going inside and being able to draw fouls. I think that was really, really big uh, for them. Uh, and then Janiah White, uh, you know, just being able to, to you know, shoot the three, uh, being able to have a little head fake, dribble drive, and then, of course, getting the shots in. So, to me, Janiah White, Destiny Brown for Alcorn were really huge in, uh, in winning against Southern. Uh, winning against Southern on in the quarterfinal round. I think Jackson, they had some initial problems uh, at first in the first round, but uh, they, you know, they were able to turn things around really fast and, you know, and put the game away. Uh, a Grambling, I thought, did not play their best basketball against Florida A&M, and you can tell it, uh, but, you know, they were able to get the job done uh, late in the ball game and pull away from, from Florida A&M. Uh, by six. So I thought the quarterfinal round was really, really huge. Uh, I thought that, uh, to me, the biggest surprise, I don't know the biggest surprise, but I think Alcorn just, you know, they just took what they gave you and they just kept doing it and kept doing it. So I, I thought that they were huge. Yeah, let's look at that Alcorn Southern game. And it's for the Jaguar fans listening out there. Southern women in that game shooting 18 to 56 for 32%. Southern women were 2 of 12 from the three point line and 14 to 24 from the free throw line for Alcorn State, 17 to 45, shooting 37%. They were 4 of 12 from the three point line and 21 of 23 from the free throw line in that ball game. Southern lose 59 to 52, get knocked out of the quarterfinal. Let's move on to the semifinal. In this ball game, and to start the day, you had Alcorn State taking on Grambling. Grambling was the two seed, and then you had Jackson State taking on Pine Bluff. Alcorn, the Cinderella squad, continues to roll on, getting the victory over Grambling, 61-59, to and then Jackson State last night against Pine Bluff. Completely put their foot on the pedal and never looked back. And Coach Tamika Reed and her team definitely looked like the number one team in the conference on the women's side as they knocked out Coach Dunn, Thornton, and UAPB. Uh, that semifinal, once again, all corn got on the Cinderella slipper. Yeah, no question. Destiny Brown had a double double in that ball game. Well, she almost had a double double. She had 19 points and seven rebounds. I thought that Tajane Wright, this was at the end of the ball game. With the end of the ball game, the game was tied. Grambling had been down. They had battled back. They kept battling back. And then they were able to tie the ball game up. And uh, tying the ball game up at 59, Alcorn gets the ball back uh, as time, you know, winds down. And they go down, and they were trying to set a play where Destiny Brown was going to go, was going to roll off and go down and get inside and try to hit the bucket. When instead, what happened was Tajane Wright was able to get the ball. The defender started stagging off of her because they were trying to defend Destiny Brown and make sure that they isolated. Uh, Janiah White, and she didn't get a shot. Well, instead, Tajane Brown got left wide open uh, on the at the left elbow, and you know, two seconds remaining in the ball game, she just turns around and she shoots. And she, the play wasn't even for her when they took the timeout. And Grambling had tied the ball game, and Tajane Wright hits that shot, and I mean, it just absolutely just sends the Alcorn fans into pandemonium and shocks Grambling the two seed, and they win that ball game. But yeah, you know. Like I said, 19 points for Destiny Brown in that contest. I think Nick, uh, the kid Cheatham ended up having 11 points in the game. Janai White had 12 points. And again, Alcorn doing it in two ways. They lost four games this year by not hitting their free throws. They went 14 to 22 at the line at the free throw line. Uh, they hit. Uh, they were able to hit some three pointers. They were five of 16. Uh, you know, Coach. Uh, Nate Kilbert said in the last about five or six games, well, in three or four going into the tournament, they were able to start hitting three pointers. They improved on that. But they just do it through grit and defense. They just, they're one of those teams. And I talked to Coach, and he said, Well, look, baby, all we do, we just get out there, we go to work, baby. That's all we do. <laughs> so, and, you know, I just told him, I said, You know, this is just a gritty team. They come to work and they just keep going at it. And so, 
They were able to knock off the three seed and the two seed, and now they're in the championship game day against Jackson State. And Jackson State never uh, – the, the game was never in doubt against Arkansas Pond Bluff. They just got on the gas, on the gas extremely early. Angel Jackson, who's like 6'6", six, six, uh, Defensive Player of the Year in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, they start working on the inside. Uh, uh, Adriana Avent uh, starts shooting. I mean, it, it just really – it was a game where Jackson State never was – it was in doubt in this game. And they were able just to roll over on, on Arkansas Pine Bluff. And, and, you know, you look at the matchup, Jackson State and UAPB. And for some reason, all season, I've been thinking every time that UAPB is going to match, going to play Jackson State, that the matchup would be there. And every time the matchup was not there, when you even look at the bigs. Well, one of the key players that was missing for Arkansas Pine Bluff was Kariah Beck. She hurt herself late in the season, last couple of few games of the season, as a matter of fact. Originally, they thought it was just a leg injury. They said maybe she should be able to go. Ended up being an Achilles injury. And uh, so Kariah Beck was the second leading scorer on Arkansas Pine Bluff's team. Is not there. Zay Green, she ends up, uh, uh, you know, having to be, you know, step up. And then, of course, you know, not only that, but you had to start depending on other players. You had to depend on, you know, Tia Morgan. You had to depend on Davenport. You had to depend yep. on, you know, other folks who, you know, even though they were good, good players, you know, missing a cry back was huge. Now, this is the same thing that the night before was just lights out at the three-point line. I had never seen a team that shot over 80% at the three-point line mm-hmm. where Arkansas Pombo did in their semifinal game. It was something that we had never seen before. And for them to be able to shoot that well from long distance, it just the shot was just not falling. On um, was not shot, you know, falling against Jackson State. They just absolutely rolled. I mean, you had everybody that was contributing in that ball game. Tylen Bowler, she had 19 points. Like I said, Adriana Avent did well. She had 19. Angel Jackson had a double double with uh, 11 points and 12 rebounds. That was the second double double of the tournament. And then Maya Crump, she had 10 points in the ball game. So, you know, when you've got players rolling the way that they did. It was just going to be hard for Arkansas Pine Bluff to uh, really come back in that ball game, and and they held Zay Green at fifteen. She had 30, 34, I believe, in the in the quarterfinal. You look at today's matchup on the women's side for the championship: Jackson State versus Alcorn. A rivalry, two Mississippi rivals, going to take over Birmingham today on the women's side. Jackson State looking to finally get that crown. They got cut short last year because of Southern beating them off a last second jump three. Uh, in that semifinal, now Jackson State has the opportunity. Alcorn State wants to be the upset Cinderella today. You look at these teams, Jackson State trying to extend a 20-game win streak for Alcorn State. They're coming into this game, winners of four in a row. Jackson State averaging 71 points a game coming in. But you look at Alcorn State, who's only averaging 62 points a game. The Tigers are 21-1 and when they put up over 63 points in a ball game. Today's matchup is going to be big when you got the Cinderella versus the clear cut favorite. Oh, yeah. This is like David and Goliath for real. I mean, it's just, this is just no doubt uh, in this ball game. And, and, you know, you start looking at Alcorn, and this is just a team that has been relying on defense. This is a very good defensive team. Uh, and uh, they have they play at 2 3 zone tr- uh, in a tremendous way. They do a great job with that. And again, Destiny Brown has been really big for them. Uh, and but I think that the key here is Jackson has so much depth, and the question is going to be if Alcorn can stay out of foul trouble. Um, you know, I think that they'll have a shot in this ball game. Uh, I think that they'll be able to do that. They have to get dribble drive penetration on Jackson State, make Angel Jackson foul them. Um, and, you know, but there's so many shooters to cover if you're Jackson State. There's so many people that you have to cover. So it's going to be a big game. Uh, you know, look, just on paper, you're just like, good Lord. Jack got about a thousand <laughs> players out there. And, you know, here it is, Alcorn. You got about, you know, you know, eight to ten players that you're out there. But, you know, anything can happen in the tournament. Ask Southern Graham. Anything can happen in the tournament. And paper doesn't matter, and, you know, at the end of the day. And Nate Kilbert has had, you know, what, 30 years of experience in doing this. And you got to feel – that uh, he's going to have a great game plan coming into this one. Um, nobody expected him to come in and beat Southern, you know, except the Alcorn folks. Nobody expected him to beat Grambling, except the Alcorn folks. And, you know, look, is anybody expecting him to beat Jackson, except the Alcorn folks? But uh, they've got a real shot, but they've got so much to contend with, with Angel Jackson and Mike Crump 
Highland Bolar, Keshana Luckett. I mean, you got just up and down, you know, they've got a lot to contend with. They've got to make sure that they uh, play very tenacious on defense and take what they give you on offense. That's it. Santor, can you hold on with me through a break and we come back and talk about the men's side of the bracket? Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back. Take a break. More of the Jaguar Journal. Darius Skelton has really had this wave of momentum for Southern. Yeah, first year player in this program. I love his decision making. He makes quick decisions, particularly when running the run pass option game. That's his specialty. He's been an impact for this offense since he took over as starting quarterback. Well, Darius Skelton is a dual threat uh, quarterback. He can throw the football. He's very good at throwing the ball down the field. Uh, we're going to work on this spring those intermediate passes, but down the field, he's one of the better down the field passes that I've seen. No action, Skelton going for it all, has a man, and hauling it in is Hunter Register. And then when you talk about running ability, he has uh, running back capabilities. He can go the distance. He has the speed to go the distance. He has the power, to, and he has the vision. And I think when you put that with a dual threat quarterback, I think he's the reason why we're so happy about this coming season. Skelton feeling the pressure. Skelton eludes a couple of tacklers. He's still on his feet. Oh, wow. oh my, little shake and big juke baby. Being a quarterback is, man, it's not easy at all. It was hard being here and having the expectations to be the starter and not being the starter. It just, it, it was overwhelming. Like, I was ready to play. And not playing when I was ready to play just made me kind of look at life differently and really think, should I be here or should I not? And I talked to God and he just settled me down. And, he told me to be patient, that's what I did. Skelton, who started the last six games of 2018 for the Jaguars. They went 5-1, and one. their only loss to Alcorn State in the SWAC title game. Taking the jet weep, and Skelton awfully good with his leg. Blitz. Register, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Nice grab, Watch. All who have had an impact here in the year lowing. Southern still off, and Skelton comes up for the third time. Taking the jet sweep, he'll keep it. A good lead block as he cuts it to the outside. The fake to Ben. Skelton will run. And dragging with them for a few yards. There he is. The time, stepping up into the end zone, has registered. Flag down, catch me, touchdown, and it's actually... First quarter yard, Southern 121, McNeese 40. Fresh set of downs as we begin the second quarter. And looking deep, Skelton for register! What's going on, everybody? I am Perry White. I'm the host of the Jaguar Journal. I want to make sure that you guys tune in live each and every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 107.3 F. All right, we are back. More of the Jaguar Journal. I'm Perry White. Good morning to everybody out there listening on 107.3 FM here in the Baton Rouge region. Everybody in Alexandria down in New Orleans and as well as people watching us on our YouTube channel. Good morning to you guys and watching us on our Facebook Live. Good morning to you guys. Go hit the subscribe button right there on our YouTube channel. Hit that follow button and like on our Facebook page. Join here by my guy Centauri Black today. He's been calling all the swag basketball game men and women. Over there in Birmingham, he's a hard-working man. Good morning. Good morning once again. And, uh, again, I apologize for the voice, uh, trying to improve it, man. But, uh, look, it's been a great week, man. I've had, a, I've had a blast. Look, I know you have, man. I've been listening to you on the calls. Now we talk about the SWAC women. Now let's jump over to the SWAC men, right? Quarterfinals started on Wednesday. Uh, let's start with Alabama and them taking on Alcorn State. Eat upset. Alcorn State, of course, coming in as the two-seed. Uh, Alabama A&M 75 to 63 over all corn state in that ball game was not seeing that one coming. Then we jump down to the next game of the day. Grambling taking on Alabama state. Interesting matchup. These two teams split during the regular season. Alabama state ended the season by beating Grambling and then Grambling comes back and get a six point victory in the quarterfinal 56 to 50 over at Alabama state. Then we move on to Thursday. Centaur Texas Southern takes on Jackson state. This seems to be what Texas Southern do. Win when the tournament matters the most. 73-62 to 62 over Jackson State. And then for the Southern fans, 
We'll talk about it. But Thune Cookman, for the third time this season, got the best of the Jaguars. 73-58. Those quarterfinals for you, Centauri. Well, as as one of my friends said after that AM game against Alcorn, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, Alcorn, when they came into this ball game, uh, you know, everybody said that this is a team to to look out for. Alabama A and M, of course, did not have one of their best players on the team, leading uh, leading scorer, as a matter of fact, uh, for the last couple of weeks, had a knee injury, and then they just started going and saying, "Hey, um, you know, they have to just, you know, make sure that they make this happen." And their coaching staff did a great job. Uh, Omari Pete really, really stepped up, double figures in that game uh, for him. Uh, but I, I think that what really was a telling sign here was just the way that they were able to handle all corn. You know, they made free throws. You know, E.J. Williams, a big fella, they said that that boy is like 6'10 and, and 235 or 250. I'm like, that boy is a biscuit away from 300. There's no way in the world he is 250. <laughs> and, and just a big kid. As a matter of fact, funny story, before they went out there, before the game started, one of the officials said, hey, man, you got to tuck your jersey in. Now, this is a big old kid. He looked like he could play on the football team. And they, he said, how? Because his jersey was just—they would have tucked it in, man. There was just nowhere to tuck it into. So, uh, but he was just a just did a great job at the free throw line for a big kid. Uh, Lorenzo Downey uh, played well in that ball game, hitting three three pointers in that contest, and they were just able to shock Alcorn by just really uh, just taking them to lunch. I mean, they did it by defense, they did it by uh, steals. Alcorn just could not put the game plan together. You know, here it is, Landon Bussey, you know, really a lot of expectations coming into the tournament, and Alabama A&M was able to uh, upset them. Uh, I want to go to the Boone Cookman and Southern game because this game was a 73-68 contest, and in that ball game, uh, you know, Coach Reggie Theus doesn't like the turnaround uh, that a uh, team has. They played the 8:30 game that night and then had to turn around and play the semifinal game at 2 o'clock in that afternoon. But, you know, uh, look, for Bethune Cookman, uh, they won their first ever – Swack tournament game. Uh, they have, were led that DJ Hollinger uh, was really good. And, you know, look, the return of Zion Harmon. Zion Harmon, of course, hurt his foot against Southern. He had 23 points in that ball game late in the season. Came to Grambling, could not play, didn't play in the last game of the year against Florida AM. and uh, But they were able to uh, get into the tournament. Deshaun Dyson, you know, once again, doing a great job. Reggie Ward Jr. stepping up. And then, you know, Zion Harmon, you know, just a quiet seven points, eight points in the ball game. But everybody else stepped up, Jacoby Hetty. And I think Zion Harmon was more of a distraction in that ball game than anything else. He was able to make a few things happen, and uh, they were able to move on. Uh, you know, and as much as, uh, as, much as you saw uh, Southern, you know, try to really make things happen, you know, with Derek Kesno, uh, Brandon Davis, who was really Southern's leading scorer, just kind of really took him out of the game. Uh, Tejon Duamasti. Uh, the kid from France, I thought, had a really big game. But uh, really, it was just Bethune Cookman just really just let, alert, let their foot off the gas in this ball game and end up uh, taking it away. Uh, the Grambling and Alabama State game, you know, this game was a little bit more interesting because Grambling, I should say Alabama State, needed a win against Grambling the last game of the season in order for them to qualify for the tournament. They were able to get a big win at home against Grambling then Arkansas Pine Bluff had to lose, which they did. The time meant that Alabama State was going to determine as the eighth seed, and Pine Bluff got knocked out. They did that. But this was a tough ball game. Uh, but uh, T.J. Metlock uh, for Alabama State, uh, Amar Knox, uh, you know, those two kids really did well. But, you know, look, Antoine Burnett played well. Troy Michael Moulton had three threes in that ball game. And Contavious Dozier, who was a uh, first-team all swat, you know, he really – Played extremely hard and extremely well in that ball game, and Grambling was able to win it uh, in in the semifinal. Uh, and then there's one more game. What's one? Which one am I forgetting? You got Bethune, you got Grambling, you got all corners. One more. Which one am I forgetting? Texas y'all? Southern and Jackson State. Oh, let's talk about Texas Southern and Jackson State. <laughs> so Texas Southern, uh, you know, look, th- this was the Jonathan CC Invitational, and I mean, if you've never seen this kid play before. He is just one of those guys that is just so entertaining to watch. First of all, his hair is 12 feet tall. <laughs> and then as he comes down, if you aren't careful as a defender, he puts you on the spin cycle like in the washer, and he'll be at the hole. Or 
he'll just have you going out there and trying to chase him around, and he'll be out hitting three-pointers. I mean, you talk about a kid that just really was incredible head coach, Johnny Jones. There was just no answer for him. Uh, P.J. Henry played extremely well in that ball game uh, for Texas Southern. But what they did is they said, hey, we know Ken Evans Jr. is going to get his. We know Colt Young or Zeke Cook is going to get theirs. But we're going to hold them, and that's just what they did. They just, you know, it was it was not really one of those games that uh, was in doubt a whole lot. Texas Southern just really, really played well. And like I said, CC was a big factor in that ball game for them, and they went at 73-62. to 62. For my Southern fans, let me talk about the Southern versus Bethune-Cookman game. Southern gets an early exit after a pretty decent season this year. They were right there with Grambling State battling for first place. Just couldn't get over the hump with Bethune-Cookman. Uh, 17 of 49 shooting this ball game for 34 percent for the Jaguars. Two of 18 from the three point line. They were 22 of 31 from the free throw line, shooting 31 percent on the other side for Coach Reggie Theus and the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. 24 of 47 shooting for 51 percent. They were four of 10 from the three point line, and 21 of 26 shooting 80 percent from the free throw line. Southern season comes to an end in the quarterfinal opening round of the SWAC men's basketball tournament. I know there was some high hopes for Southern, but on the back end, I think Southern just ran out of gas. You look at without Terry on Joseph, you look at uh, some of those losses they had. Grambling getting two wins on Southern on the season. Bethune Cookman getting two wins on Southern this season. Then Southern losing one on the road against Texas Southern, who seems to be red hot right now. We move on to the semifinals. Bethune Cookman and I think Reggie Theus, when he talked about, hey, having to play that late game and then turn around and come back again. I think it showed late in the second half against Grambling. 65-53, to 53, the Tigers of Grambling get the victory over Reggie Theus and Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. And then as they closed it out last night, Texas Southern rolls on 72-65, to Santori, the semifinals. Yeah, let's start with uh, Texas Southern because they had one heck of a game. <clears throat> First of all, and then I didn't mention this, in that game against Jackson State, they shot somewhere north of uh, 75 per, 70 or 74 percent from the field in the first half of that ball game against Jackson. You shoot 70 percent from the field. You got teams that don't shoot free throws that well, and they shot 70 <laughs> percent from the field against Jackson State. And then they turn around and they shot like 25 or 26 percent. And I, we asked Johnny Jones after the game, you know, talk about the shooting night. You just guys, you just couldn't miss in the first half. He said, "Well, let me tell y'all, we shot seventy percent in the first half, but only twenty five percent in the second. So it balanced all out. We are, we we did okay. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, but that that game, this this Texas Southern Alabama A and M game was all that it delivered. I mean, Alabama A and M was absolutely incredible in this contest, and I was really impressed with what I saw from this team. You know, let's talk about late in the game. This was a tie ball game. Alabama A and M made a couple of key turnovers. Late in this contest, and Texas Southern basically won this game off of a, a three-point bucket uh, late in the ball game by Deion Stroud that put them up by three. But aside from that, this game was close throughout. I mean, Alabama a and fans were ready to dethrone Texas Southern and saying, you know, hey, down goes Texas Southern. Here comes the other Maroon 5 getting ready to go to the championship game. We're going to have a new champion. But Coach Johnny Jones has said, oh, no, wait a minute now. Yeah. Hold on. And, <laughs> Jonathan CC said, hey, we got you. And so CC started playing. And here's the thing. P.J. Henry got hurt in his ball game, tweaked his ankle, and we didn't see him most of the second half. Here comes Jalen Weisinger. He starts playing well, decides that he wants to get into the dunk fest, and they just start, I mean, just really just go toe, no, toe-to-toe. Without... Uh-oh. I think we lost him. We got to get him to come back. We're gonna keep things rolling. Talking about that Texas Southern game against, he's calling back right now. Let's make sure we get him back straight. Santoro, we got you back. Hello. Yeah, we got you. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was just really impressed with again CC the way that he played in this ball game. Uh, you know, four players in double figures, I believe, for Alabama A and M and Lorenzo Downey. He shot extremely well, six of eight from the free throw line, three for four. From the uh, three-point line, uh, Amari Peak had ten points in this ball game. Uh, let's see who else in the, in the ball game. Uh, J- Jalen Randall had eleven. Chad Moody, the freshman, freshman of the year in this conference. That kid is going to be something special. He's still in his high school body. He yeah. doesn't even know better right now. He's just going out there to ball out. 
You know, them Alabama and them folks probably cut your line. You're over there talking about them, and uh, they didn't want that loss to Texas Southern. So, you know, I think they cut your line over there in Birmingham. By the way, y'all got ABC News running, brother. Oh, you can. he can hear the news in the back. There you go. Okay, you good now? I'm good. Yeah. I said I, I said those Alabama and them folks, you in Birmingham, you talking about that loss, lad. They probably cut your line. No, nah, we don't want to hear about that today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me tell you, that Alabama a and team was so good last night. I mean, they really, really came to play. And they, we thought, man, here comes this A&M team already with one upset, and now they're about to get another one and beat Texas Southern. And, uh, but, you know, look, it was just – we call this now the Johnny Jones Invitational because he's already won three in a row. This could be the four-peat. And, uh, you know, look. Everybody just comes in, hey, do you take Texas Southern or the field no matter where they're seated at? Because they're always just so competitive. And, you know, they lost so much off of last year's team. But, you know, geez, you come back and you have CC, you have PJ Henry, uh, you have Jalen Weisinger, you have just a lot of guys that have been able to step up, Deion Stroud. But, man, I'm telling you, this was a big ball game, in my opinion. And, and you know, look, Alabama a and fought hard. Um, they just they really did a great job. And, you know, at the end, they just ran out of gas from Texas Southern. When's this one close? And I mean, it it, it it was like, look, there was some folks from Texas Southern that was sitting, and I mean, they were real tight sitting down on the sideline. He was like, oh, Lord, wait a minute. This team really coming to play. <laughs> and uh, oh, wait a minute. We're not supposed to be this close. And you could just see the sigh of relief and just folks just thanking Jesus at the end of the ball game because they're like, oh, Lord. I mean, look, the whole swag tournament in some of these games, you had to have, have medicine in order to watch some of these games. I yep. told Nate Gilbert that. I said, man, look, you got to have medicine to watch your games, man, because you just have people just this on edge constantly. I said, you got people in anxiety attacks pretty soon. So, look, you don't funny. need no medicine. You need a drink. Look, yeah, Ooh. look, I'll be real. Yeah, no, no, no medicine. You need it because the medicine going to knock me out. I need a drink because I'm trying to just survive to the end. Let's look at now, today's you know, big matchup, Santori Gramlin you made, you made versus. Me drink. That, you made me a good drink. <laughs> a good, a stiff one, right? <laughs> Texas Southern versus Grambling, a rematch of last year's championship game. Last year, when you look at this, Texas Southern came in as the eighth seed and found themselves in the championship game. On the other side, Grambling seemed to have been the clear-cut favorite to win it. But then, like you said, Johnny Jones and Texas Southern found a way to get it done and ultimately won the conference last year for a third consecutive time. They're looking today to win it for a fourth consecutive time. Grambling State, 8-2 and two in their last 10 games, averaging 68 points a game, 33 rebounds, 9 assists, 6 steals, 3 blocks, while shooting 45% around the field, but their opponents have averaged 64 points a game. You look on the other side for Texas Southern. They're 7-3 and three in their last 10 games, averaging 75 points a game, 33 rebounds, 13 assists, 7 steals, 3 blocks, and they're shooting from 46% around the field, just slightly better by 1% uh, better than Gramlin. When you look at this matchup today, Gramlin versus Texas Southern, the rematch, Texas Southern looking to make it four in a row. What do you see with this one? Well, first of all, for Grambling, they're going to have to have a great game. They split during the regular season with Texas Southern, lost a tough one at home in Grambling, and then they were able to win on the road in Houston. Jordan, there's there's so many storylines in this ball game. You know, look, you got Tremichael Moten, who had 26 points in the game against Bethune Cookman, six of seven at the three point line. I don't think he's had that many threes since the 2019 season. Uh, I think he had seven possibly that year in one game, but he was six of seven there. Uh, Jordan Smith is, you know, hurt his back last year. wasn't able to finish the game against Texas Southern. He has a mission that he wants to go on. You know, head coach Dante Jackson. This is his third regular season crown in seven years. Second time going to the championship game. And you know, look, you can tell they want to go to the big dance. They just don't want to get to the championship game. Um, Kentavious Dozier. I mean, he was just incredible. He just said, you know, look, we want to make, it, we want to win a championship. And you can tell. They have this Kobe Bryant type of mentality, you know. Hey, the job's not finished. We need we need to win the championship. On the other side, you know, Texas Southern. Good Lord, the question is going to be how healthy is PJ Brown because we didn't see him in the second half. Was Coach Johnny Jones just kind of holding him out, and so he didn't, you know, really injure that foot in that ball game against Alabama A and M. Uh, so will he be completely healthy in this ball game? I think that's going to be a big question because I think without PJ Henry. P.J. Henry's really going to have – they're going to have a really big problem with Grambling because it's not going to be necessarily just on offense but defense because that's going to be the real big tough uh, task for them today with uh, with Grambling. So I think that mistakes, whoever makes the most mistakes is going to have a real problem in this ballgame because both teams take advantage of your mistakes. 
You have to hit free throws. And, you, you know, we've seen that in the tournament. Look at all four. They lost four games this year by not hitting free throws. You know, the women on the women's side, they've been killing it at the free throw line, you know, uh, lately. I mean, they shot 90% from the free throw line in their two, uh, in their first game. So I think it's just all, all going to be about who limits the amount of mistakes. You cannot, have, you cannot have a team that's not shooting good on the free throw line. And, look, offense may give more sell tickets, but defense is going to win a championship. And whoever has the best defense today, that's the team that's going to win. And eighth offense is going to be the defense. Low-scoring game the first time these two teams played with Texas Southern and Grambling. Texas Southern got the victory 54-52. to And then second time around when these two teams played, Grambling got the victory 66-63. to So it's either been a two-point swing or a three-point swing between these two teams. I expect it coming down to the wire the same today when you look at Texas Southern and Gremlin. All right, we got the matchup set. Jackson State versus Alcorn, a Mississippi affair over in Alabama and Birmingham today for the Women's Championship. And then Texas Southern and Gremlin State, a rematch of last year's SWAC Championship tournament game on the men's side. Centauri, for the people who want to watch the game, because you're going to be calling both of them, how can they watch it and what do they need to do for the women and the men game at what time? Well, unfortunately, uh, my job is done on television. I'll be doing radio tonight for one game. Oh, uh, no! They bring, they bring their own crew in for the championship games. You know how that goes. Oh! But, uh, yeah, so I think the ESPNU are the games, 4.30 for the women, 8.30 for the men. And really late this year, you know, normally you'll see the women's games start around 1 o'clock and then the men around 5. But, yeah, this year it is a very late tip for the, men, for the women and the men. And here's what I asked Dante Jackson after the game. I said, you know, normally – you're talking about a late afternoon tip-off. Now you're not tipping until 8.30 that night. And he said, you know, look, we got to have these guys. We're going to be sitting around. Uh, we're going to be, you know, just trying to keep these kids fresh and, you know, until 8.30 that night, which is, you know, it's a little bit more difficult. Some coaches want to do it in the afternoon and kind of, you know, get over with. But, you know, hey, late game last night. So a and up between a and Texas Southern. And so Coach Johnny Jones gets a little bit more rest for his team. And so does head coach Dante Jackson. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be a late tip for the men, 430 for the women. Uh, I expect a big game on that men's side. And, again, Alcorn could be the Cinderella story of the Southwestern Athletic Conference if they knock off the line. I mean, this is one of them things where you, you take it to the altar and you just like, Lord, now you know. I don't know how, I don't know how we're going to do this. You know they got the gentle giant on the inside. You know they got all kind of shooters from the outside. You know now you know, Lord, we ain't got all of that. So what are we supposed to do with all of this? And so, uh, but you know, look, that's just going to be one of those games where if and then I know Tamika Reese, she's telling, she told her kids, don't think because we're playing Alcorn that they just going to give us this game. If you don't get out there and play, you're going to be grambling and sub, and we're not going to get, we're not going to finish our mission. Let me and, ask you uh, this. I, Let me ask you this before. Uh... Since you're not going to be calling the game, I can ask you who you think going to win then, right? Well, oh. no, I'm not. I'm still not going to say who's going to win. I, I don't predict the game too much. I still have radio. Oh. To uh, but I, I'll just say this. I, I'll say this much. I think that, again, the, the team on the women's side, if Jackson State does not come out in the game, when you saw this against Prairie View when they played them late in the season, Jackson could get taken down if they don't play their game and keep focused. Now, for uh, all courts, they just can't have mistakes. They got to shoot free throws the way that they had. They got to shoot three pointers. They got to play defense like they've never played before. I'm telling you, they got to call all of the, the shaman. They got to call the bishop. They got to call <laughs> all of the folks to make sure that they go ahead and do what they need to do. But when you got a 30 year veteran, just think about this Nate Kilbert in 1986 was a point guard from Mississippi Valley when they went to the NCAA tournament under Lafayette Stribling. Nobody thought that this team from Mississippi was going to be that team to ever go to the tournament. And look what they did. Um, he, you know, he was an assistant coach under the great Shirley Walker. And I know he's been talking with her um, as, as well. Shirley Walker, of course, longtime legend at Alcorn State, that little school in Mississippi where they were able to take teams to the tournament. And they had battles with Pat Bibbs at Grambling, and they had battles with Jackson State. So I think it's just going to be one of those things where they've got to have the game of their lives, but they've got experience on that side with Nate Kilburn. And sometimes, experience at that coaching position. They got Elvis Robinson, who was a former head coach as well as his assistant coach. That can be a big factor in the ball game is the experience that they have uh, in the coaching area. But now Tamika Reed, five years, I mean, she's, this has been, she's been down this road before. She is no stranger to the championship game atmosphere. And I'm telling you, she's telling her girls, do not take this for granted that they're just awkward and they're going to give you the game. 
it's not going to happen. And that kind of mentality, I think, will help Jackson State. I'm looking forward to the games today, and I'm looking forward to watching and, and paying attention. Let the people know how they can keep up with you on social media, Santori. Sure. Uh, Santori Black, just go out there on uh, Facebook uh, and on Instagram. Um, I'm right there, Santori B, on um, on Twitter or X or whatever they call it now. Uh, I'm, I'm even on TikTok from time to time. I, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. You know, my, my kids help <laughs> me out. Uh, but I'm learning a lot more about it, learning about the, you know, posting a little bit more. My niece is like the expert. Her and my, my daughter is the expert in the house on doing all of that kind of stuff. So when I mess up, they're the ones that call me and say, what are you doing? So, uh, but yeah, you can follow me on social media, Santoria Black, uh, Santoria B. And uh, look, uh, just great, Sam Black 75. Uh, just you're going out there. We'd love to connect with you. And, uh, you know, it's good to say it's been great, man. This tournament has been great. Uh, 12 games, three days. It all comes down to these last two games. Somebody's going to the NCAA tournament. We know one team right now is going to postseason. It was announced yesterday by the conference uh, that Grambling has been invited to the WNIT, so we know that they'll be going there. They went to the WNIT a few years back under Freddie Murray, who was an assistant coach at Alabama A&M now, and they upset Ole Miss on the road. So this is not uncharted territory for Grambling. So, uh yeah, this is a, it's already having one team in postseason. You're going to get a second. I think that's a great, great honor for, for the swag. Thank you for coming on this morning, my guy. And I enjoyed the conversation. Basketball season for us, man. It has come down to this. So this is this is it, man. So I've enjoyed the conversation, man. Thank you for all the great calls you've been doing all week, man. And time to go and call it a wrap after tonight. Yeah, and just, just remember, you know, if, if you have that anxiety problem today, I don't know what your uh, drink of choice would be. Do you need something more brown, more clear, frozen? I don't know. You know, maybe you want just some clean water. I don't know. But you know, make sure you have your drink of choice beverage. I would say today because you're gonna need it. That's it, man. Appreciate you for coming on this morning. I definitely be hitting you up, man. We'll definitely have to have you on it and clarify once all this thing the dust settles. We'll have more conversation about it. All right, look, y'all take care. It's, it's a real honor, and I appreciate y'all having me on and. Give me time on your show. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Santoria Black, he's been calling the games all week over in Birmingham for the SWAG tournament. Let's get ready to take a break real quick. We'll come back for a quick second, and then we'll keep the show going. All right? Stay tuned. It's the Jaguar Journal. It's on the yard, sports, and I'm Perry White. And what I need for you to do is go follow and subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter right now. For the first time in the 79-year history of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Elite Championship game determines the overall champion today, live from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. It's the champions of the East, Jackson State, taking on Southern, the champs from the West. Hello, everybody. George Johnson along with Charles Mann. And I got to tell you, a great poet once said, this is the way it's supposed to be. And it is number 11 Southern taking on number 15 Jackson State. Both programs have won three SWAC titles over the decade. So it's only fitting in the first SWAC championship game, we determine the program of the decade. We've got a lot of offense out on the field. And yet this guy right here, he's going to tell you this game's all about D. It's always all about D, George. <laughs> you know that. It's always all yeah, about an D. An all-pro defensive end is going to tell you that. When you think about Jackson State. This is a team that is very potent offensively, but defensively they've led the SWAC throughout most of the year. and They've got the best player in defense in the SWAC, and that's Tommy Head. Tommy Head. Get, the, get used to saying that name. You'll say it all day. He'll be all over the field. He's always around the football. He's the leading tackler on this team. He also has five and a half sacks. At one point this year, Southern led the nation in scoring defense. Then they ran into Florida a and they got a lot of guys out there that can get it done, but at the Top of the list is Demarcus Miller. Demarcus Miller, the linebacker coach, Terrence Graves, told me there's one word to describe this kid, and that is relentless. He's only 5'10", 285 pounds. He makes a lot of plays, though. Relentless, appropriate word for our third member of the broadcast team, and that's Joe Clare, who's standing by down on the sideline. Joe? Yes, indeed. I'm down here on the field capturing all the pageantry and revelry that is black college football. Birmingham, Alabama is a lovely city. This is the inaugural SWAC championship in their city, so they came out to have a good time. I will be covering the bands, the cheerleaders, shout-outs, all of that kind of stuff. Back to you guys up top.
All right, thank you very much, Joe. You know, earlier this year, Southern beat Jackson State, the fourth straight win over the Tigers. But what's most impressive about Southern, they haven't lost a conference game in 25 outings. They put it on the line against Jackson State. We look at the starting lineups brought to you by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. You saw the backs. Here's your offensive line, Damon Nivens is a first-team all-SWAC member. Defensively, there's your starting lineups for Jackson State's defense, Chandler, Tommy Head, Edward Reese, pretty good middle linebacker. Rashard Anderson is a professional prospect, and they say he will be in the NFL next year. It is your starting lineup. Brought to you by Western Union, Mark Washington is your quarterback, Destry Wright, the all-time leading rusher in school history is the tailback, Jeremiah Todd. All right, we're back. It is the Jaguar Journal. I want to thank Ken Richard coming on from HBCU Sports and my man Santori Black talking to us. He's been broadcasting the call of the game all week down in Birmingham, Alabama. So we had to take a break, get back on track. Good morning to everybody out there listening on 107.3. I know the city is active today. Boosie Bash taking place over at Southern University today. So all of those acts and everybody that's going to be there. And then the wearing of the Green Parade taking place at 10 o'clock today. I know people are listening here on Talk 107. We may have some new listeners. Don't let it be your last time. Come on back. We're right here at the Jaguar Journal every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And if you want to keep up with us, be sure to go subscribe to our YouTube channel and as well as follow us on our Facebook channel and like as well the Jaguar Journal on both of those. We don't need anything but your love and your support. Good morning to everybody out there across the world that are listening to us. People are checking in from all over the place, especially on our social media and on our YouTube channel. So it's always good to have you guys checking in with us and everybody right here in the Capital City region as it is a lot going on today. I have my green. I got my little green shot uh, cup, whatever this thing is. So I'm going to see how much I'm going to put this to work today. All right. So let's get ready to take another break and then we're going to get ready to close this thing out. So y'all stay tuned. More of the Jaguar Journal. Watching the Southern University Human Jukebox. Click here to watch more videos. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. What's going on, everybody? I am Perry White. I'm the host of the Jaguar Journal. I want to make sure that you guys tune in live each and every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 107.3 FM. We also have our affiliates in Alexandria, Louisiana, as well as down in New Orleans. And if you're not able to catch us on Radio Live, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Facebook. It's the Jaguar Journal.
107.3 FM. I am Perry White. Good morning to everyone and welcome back to the Jaguar Journal. Glad to have you guys with us. Good morning to everybody listening to us on our YouTube channel. Good morning to everybody watching us on our Facebook Live. And good morning to all of you guys listening out there on 107.3 here in the Baton Rouge Capital City area. Good to have you guys. I hope you guys are up. Hey, one thing about it today, do not drink and drive. Call an Uber, okay? I know it's going to be a lot of celebration going on. Boosie Bass right there on the campus of Southern University. Then you got the wearing of the green parade this morning kicking off at 10 o'clock here shortly. So I know people are packing in, finding places. Y'all, hey, just be safe about how you act today. That's all I'm asking. Well, no matter where you're at in the city, just be safe about how you act today. If you feel like you can't drive, just call a friend or call an Uber. Now, that's one thing I believe in. Don't put yourself and nobody else's life in danger today, all right? Fun can be fun. It ain't fun when you wake up in a jail cell. Wondering what the hell happened yesterday, because the last thing I remember, we was catching green beads at a parade or we were somewhere hanging out. So just do what's best for you, all right? No matter where you're at. Now, if you're not even just in Baton Rouge, no matter where you're at, just be safe about how you handle yourself this weekend. And that's coming from Perry White, a big bro. I ain't ready to be called unk yet. I'm just, I'm big bro. I ain't ready to be unk. They keep trying to put me in that unk category. Don't put, nope. I'm not your daddy's age. I'm like your big bro. Don't be laughing, Mike. Mike back here. <laughs> Mike back here laughing at me, but I definitely appreciate you guys, man. Once again, Thank you to Ken Richard of HBCU Sports coming in. We're talking about the SWAC basketball format changing for next year. We had our pros and cons and what we talked about with that. And then thank you to Santori Black, man. He's been a hardworking guy this week. He has literally called every game from the, the, the quarterfinal and the semifinal since Wednesday. And then you have today's championship game. I don't know how y'all feel about Southern being put out, both men and women, in the quarterfinal. Southern losing to Alcorn State, who seems to be the Cinderella team on the women's side, taking on their rival Jackson State today for the women's championship, and then Southern losing to Bethune-Cookman for the third time this year, who Bethune-Cookman made it to the semifinal game and then ultimately lost to Grambling on yesterday. So both teams got put out early. This this swag basketball tournament is something to watch. Texas Southern vying for its fourth consecutive SWAC men's tournament championship. Jackson State trying to win theirs this year, riding a 20-game winning streak. Can you imagine that? How many teams you know that can can rock out 20 straight? And with today's win, it'll be 21 headed into the NCAA tournament right now there. The matchup could be. Y'all listen to me because I know there's some LSU people listening to this morning a lot because people are up early this morning. There could be a Jackson State versus LSU rematch for the NCAA tournament right here in Baton Rouge. Jackson State right now is projected to be a 15 seed if they're able to get the victory today over Alcorn, which will be big for them and big for the conference because traditionally we have seen the teams from this conference get that 16 seed in that first play-in game. We saw it last year with Southern who ultimately upset Jackson State and then beat Pine Bluff in the SWAC tournament championship. They went on to have to play in that play-in game against Sacred Heart. So now to have Jackson State, who will, if they win today, that'll be a 21-game winning streak. They have received votes before the regular season ended to be in the top 25, AP top 25. So if they win, there's a potential that you will see a Jackson State versus LSU matchup to open up the NCAA tournament. Jackson State perhaps could be the 15th seed, but you never know how things are going to go because then that all determines on who's the Cinderella's from other conferences. Who's that team like an Alcorn who may not even, in our mind, when you look at them, you know, he's supposed to be in the NCAA tournament. But guess what? You happen to win when it mattered most, and here you go. Who is your Constellation Prize? You get to go play in the first four in. Because that's what's going to happen if Alcorn gets in. All right? So that is the, the, the setup. But for the people that's listening, Jackson State could possibly be uh, LSU's first matchup coming into the NCAA tournament. Jackson State actually had that game, had LSU on the ropes. Until about the last four minutes of that game, LSU found a way to close it out over Jackson State. So shout out to Coach Tamika Reed and her ball club uh, for what they've done when undefeated in the regular season conference play. They're still rolling through the conference tournament. They have won five consecutive SWAC regular season titles. Can they add that tournament title to it this year in which they fell short last year? That's going to be the question. Grambling State, Texas Southern, Johnny Jones, LSU, y'all remember him? He's looking to win his fourth consecutive tournament championship today. 
and take Texas Southern to the NCAA tournament once again. So, got a lot going on when you talk about basketball because it is March Madness. Now, moving forward, I'm not going to be this deep into basketball. Today was all about basketball because why not talk about it when it's all over the place? No matter where you go, all the betting sites, everybody is talking about basketball right now. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's show. I hope you guys have enjoyed me. I'm finally getting into my rhythm. Now I'm about to get ready to go enjoy myself for the rest of the day. And I hope you guys do the same thing. I hope you guys be safe. And most of all, I hope you guys be blessed. And put on some green today if you ain't got to. If not, just put a dollar on your shirt and tell everybody it's your birthday. It does not matter. However, it works for you. So I want to thank you guys. And I know there's a lot of listeners that don't, that aren't just Southern fans. We got LSU people that listen. We got people just all across the state of Louisiana don't necessarily even have to be a fan of nobody. They just love to listen, as well as people around the conference. It's good to have you guys in and just chopping it up and join us with us because, once again, we try to open this platform to be a part of everybody in this discussion. But, hey, don't forget, we still the Jaguars now. They're still, I'm still a Jaguar at heart. But at the end of the day, I got love for everybody because I'm a conversationalist and I like to talk about all of these things and bring it together and show how we got to start at home and then work our way out. And that's how you bring this all together when you're talking about networking. So I love you guys. I hope you guys have a safe and beautiful weekend. Brandy Harris, Brandy B. Harris will be back next week to rock and roll with me. She's out there doing work with WBRZ today for the coverage of the wearing of the green parade. So thank you guys, man. I love you. Be sure to go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on our Facebook and like, please, the Jaguar Journal, journal on both. So thank you guys. I'll be back next week at the same time in the same place. Because always, it's the Jaguar Journal. <laughs>
What's going on, everybody? I am Perry White. I'm the host of the Jaguar Journal. I want to make sure that you guys tune in live each and every Saturday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 107.3 FM. We also have our affiliates in Alexandria, Louisiana, as well as down in New Orleans. And if you're not able to catch us on Radio Live, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Facebook. It's the Jaguar Journal.